So you're racking your brain trying to figure out how do you end a song with an echo or reverb effect? I got you covered, kiddo. What's up, Internet? Robert Teagar. I'm back again with another video. Today, we are talking about how you end a song with an echo or reverb effect. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. If that's something you're into, stick around, take a look around the channel. I'm sure you're going to find a bunch of stuff that adds value to your life. Today, we want to know how do you add an echo to the end of a song? It seems like it should be something that you just can kind of like add a little bit of an effect to, but there's a slight technique that we need to go over. I'm working today in Premiere, but this type of technique should work in all NLEs. Let's jump on in and see exactly how it's done. Now for this thing, I have a sequence set up and what I wanna do is take this ending point right here, this particular region where the logo drops in and explodes, and I kinda wanna add this little like bam, and an echo effect to it. So it kind of sounds like it's uh, something that's exploding in the middle of space. So I need to add an echo effect to that, but I also need to make sure that the audio stops with just enough reverb on it so that it has something to grab onto and make an echo from. So that's where this technique actually makes a lot more sense. If you're thinking about it from that standpoint, you can't just simply slap a delay or an echo on it or a reverb from your effects panel. You have to actually have something for the effect effect to grab onto and then nothingness afterwards for it to echo into. Seems kind of weird, but let, let me explain exactly how it's done. Now, when we're in here, what we have to do is actually create a nested region of audio. So I want my audio to end here and I'm going to actually take this little area right here, right click, and I'm going to go up to nest. I'm going to create a nested region from this audio. I'm not going to name it anything crazy, just nest audio for echo, boom. And as you can see, it kind of changed to a different darker color green. And what I wanna do now is double click on this region. It's going to pull up a nested audio for echo sequence. It's really not like a sequence, but it's just a isolated area for us to manipulate this from. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And the technique here and how this thing wins is by adding a drop in the audio where I want my echo effect to go, but giving me enough distance over here for there to be some place for that audio to echo into. It's almost like creating a chamber for that audio to echo into, but we don't want any noise to be in there. We want it to be dead silent. So how do we make it silent? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and add by hitting Command or Control on my keyboard. It pulls up that little plus sign underneath my cursor. So I'm gonna hit a plus sign here and add a keyframe. I'm gonna click here and add another keyframe. And I'm gonna drop this audio to nothing, bring the volume all the way down or bring the gain more specifically all the way down. I'm gonna click Shift this area all the way over. Now, the reason I click shift is that I can drag that keyframe around without changing the gain of what that uh, audio level is, right? If I don't hit shift, I run the possibility of increasing or decreasing the dBs uh, by just moving this around. You can see I can kind of change it if I don't lock in that shift. But once I hit shift, I'm just moving it across without it affecting the actual volume. So I'm gonna go back down to zero here. And it takes a second. So now that I'm back at zero, I'm gonna hit click, shift, drag it over. And as you can see, I'm creating a pretty aggressive drop off in the audio that's there, but that's okay because of how we're going to utilize this technique. So now what do we have? We have a audio region that it plays all of the audio, right? Until the point where I want it to drop off and echo into. And then I just kind of drag this out as much as I want to. I just need a big runway for nothingness to echo into, okay? Now I'm gonna go back here. And as you'll notice, I can now grab this region, this nested region and extend it because we went here in nest for echo and made it longer than before. So I can go back into this sequence and make it longer. And now if I go to that point where I want it to echo, we're gonna just Take a listen to what it sounds like. I quit. I quit. I quit. Right? So you have that hard drop off where there's nothing when the logo comes in and hits. And now we can add our effects. So I'm gonna go into reverb and I'm gonna go studio reverb and blast it on there. And I'm gonna put great hall. I'm gonna make the room size 
really big. I'm going to take the output level and the wet is really how much of the effect is on that particular region. I'm going to crank that up a whole bunch too. I'm going to turn the decay down just a little bit. Uh, and we'll let's just see what that sounds like when we do it here. Ready? Uh-oh, we're getting somewhere, right? Cool. Here we go. So there you have it. With that technique, using nested regions, dropping down the audio and applying effects right at the moment that you want to, you can create that echo effect you've always been looking for. Now, if you're looking for three different ways to fade your audio out in Premiere Pro, check out this video on the side. And if you haven't already, go ahead and ring the bell for posting notifications, subscribe, do all that cool stuff so you can stay in tune with what's going on in Tea Garden land. With that said, ladies and germs, that's another video in the can. I will see you guys next week. Peace.